Hello, welcome to this one. Yeah, we're on Norton Disney. Right, I'm full of cold, I'm full of beans. It's my birthday bash, so I'm full of obviously joy as well. The lake is absolutely full of water, so that is meant to be the peg, but it's two foot over. Uh, two of the lakes actually closed. I wanted turners, yeah, I wanted to get on turners, but it's actually shutting from uh, Saturday, and it's Thursday today. And um, yeah, I could do my the move, but when you see all the gear what I carried, you won't want to move it. Yeah, it's like step down yard. So I'm absolutely knackered. So there's my new barrel over there. What's just got the crap on it, and everything else is down here. Yeah, so it's a lot of sorting out. Nothing's up as of yet, obviously, because I've only just got to the peg. That's why I look like I'm sweating like a pedo. And uh, yeah, so where am I? Right. I'm on Holden's Lake, yeah, and I'm uh, fishing peg six in the corner. Uh, yeah, so my hands are a little shaky as well from obviously hooking that barrel because that's a single wheeler. Now, I've been told it's up to 16 foot deep. Um, it does go deeper than that, but the section what I'm in, it's only up to 16 foot. Uh, I can only cast a maximum of 75 yards, and to be honest with you, with that wind coming with the PVA bag, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be pretty rough anyway. That. I've lost over a rod length straight in front of me unless I get the old uh, Darth Vader's out and obviously get down in there and then do it like. So yeah it's a little bit limited obviously where I am but I can bank a fish in there it's plenty deep enough to do it like I say it's two foot deep. Now regarding the lake itself uh, this is obviously straight from the lodge yeah not from other people this is straight from the lodge. This lake has not produced a fish for a whole entire year. Yeah, not since January, but for a whole entire year. So 365 days or more. So I'm set up for a challenge, aren't I? Yeah. If it happens, it's all bonus. So I always say that. Yeah, if it happens, it's bonus. I can't even see the phone yet because I've got the sun right in my face. Uh, Weather wise, it's meant to be a bit overcast today. The sun's really sun keeps working out. Tomorrow's meant to be sun, but tonight. Yeah, on my birthday, 25th of January, we've got a full moon, which is called a wolf moon. Yeah, so I'm going to be owl, owling. Yeah, and all going well, these fish are going to be owling with me. Well, I've got a little friend saying hello. Yeah, keeps coming in the bivvy. Literally a couple of inches from my feet, really. I'm still not set up. It's an absolute mess in here. Yeah. Tweet, tweet. You alright, guys? Right, so everything's set up now, rods are on the dance floor, everything's obviously done in here. Yeah, it is uh, 2.47, I got onto the complex, I think it was 11.20, 12.20, I think it was more 12.20. Yeah, so cars right round there, obviously barrowed round and that lot, uh, two barrel loads, and uh, everything's set up now. Now, what's on the rods at the moment? I've got two yellow baits on because apparently this place loves yellow baits. Yeah, so we'll find out. And then uh, I've got one which just a yeah, like a um, snowman. So I've basically got a pop up, um, a signature one. Yeah, I think it was signature. I can't remember what it is now. Yellow one. Uh, might be pineapple and embu terry. Can't remember. 100% sticky baits. Uh, there's another yellow one out there which was one what was on already so that is basically washed out yeah no flavor to that whatsoever uh, that one ain't got no freebies around it that is just literally as it is so from the last setup so there's no, no freebies around it. it's just a single only and then the left rod and the middle rod has actually got the PVA bags on now I did these a different way if you're not already seen it you'll have to jump back a video and you'll see how I did these PVA bags and these are for the helicopter system yeah so it's a nice nice parcel with an helicopter system you know for well nothing tangles you got that longer hook link and all that sort of stuff and jobs are good and but before putting any bait out whatsoever I was having a little lead around yeah I'm not I'm not marking up properly because I can only fish maximum yards of 75 yards yeah that's all I can fish yeah so it's not a long chug whatsoever any anybody can throw this sort of distance so it's not a long chug whatsoever at all so I basically chucked it around the 75 yarders and all I've done from that is just literally felt the lead back straight lines and I found one weed bed between 55 and 60 yards yeah nothing dramatic at all 
So what I've done, I've put um, the two PVA bags just on the opposite side of the weed bed. Yeah, you're probably thinking, why not on this side? And it's it's I've got a big thing about hiding the line now because of how my rods are. I've got these actually up on the bank. They're not technically actually on the peg where they should be. They're actually back over a rod length back. Yeah, because obviously it's all flooded. So I've got quite a bit of line going through. I would like to back lead, but if I get any swans or anything like that, which I already have, but they're not bothered the rods, the line's going out quite a little bit before I can back lead it. <clears throat> so I'm just going to literally fish it as it is for now. See how it gets on. Keep an eye on the water, all that sort of stuff. Um, speaking to um, a couple of lads who come around there and that like to fish it quite often, said that they never show on here. So whether that's the case is another thing. Regarding what the bailiffs told me earlier on, that a fish has, hasn't been out here in over a year, whether that is true or not, is two different things, isn't it? You take it with a pinch of salt. As someone caught one, just not told the bailiffs. You don't know. So, if it hadn't come out for a whole entire year, then fair enough. I'm set up for a really hard mission, but I don't care. I'm here and I like the challenge. Uh, instead of just going to a noddy water where it's just catching little tiny fish over and over again I want to have a chance for some big fish yeah I like I like to catch my smaller ones in the summer yeah in winter I want I want to have the chance for the harder ones <laughs> well I do, <coughs> I do now well yeah I'm absolutely full of man flu yeah so yeah that's great isn't it on my birthday so it's 25th today January and uh, yeah it's it's overcast now so it looks light to you but it is actually really overcast it's just how the water's reflecting onto me that's all it is the sky can't even see the sun but full moon tonight yeah all going well that pokes out full moon Ow. yeah all going well that pokes out a uh, couple more anglers rocked up so the two what i was speaking to i think they've set up directly across from me there was a guy already there but i don't know if he's actually fishing or not uh, when i was coming round. Um, with a uh, old water bucket, yeah, because I couldn't be bothered to carry the bucket, I thought I'd carry a heavy thing, so the water bucket, water, water tank. Um, that bivvy was already up, all the rods was up in the air, so whether it's gone for a dump, tackle shop, whatever, gone to sleep for a bit, don't know, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's one of them, isn't it? But this is the only way I can see the water, and uh, the reason why is because when I'm sat on the bed, the bivvy is at an angle like that, so all I can see is basically the roof, yeah, and then I've lit, I can see the tip of my rods and then roughly about another foot and then that is it. <coughs> <coughs> so yeah, there we are. Right, so I'm going to get all my power banks out, maybe get a coffee on, uh, start thinking about something to eat as well. Uh, yeah, jobs are good. Right, so there's my view. Yeah, and believe it or not, guys, this is how I sleep all night. So I've got the overwrap on. So we've got obviously that's the inner skin there, folded up. Never roll that thing down ever. Hot water bottle just in case. We've got the outer skin. Yeah, and I, all it's for is stop condensation, just give you that little bit more temperature sort of thing as well. So just yeah, but it's not meant to be bad anyway. It's meant to be quite warm this one. But there, even when it is really Baltic and cold, yeah, that door never goes down. The only time that door goes down is when I'm taking the dumps. Obviously, other people can't see me unless they don't give a shit, and then I'll just literally give a shit outside near the rods. Yeah. But, nah, this is normally how, how it is all night long. Yeah, I don't bother with the door down. Reason why, rods are down here, as you can see. I can get onto them quickly. It's a matter of case, just literally slide something on my feet, whatever that is, whether it's sliders, shoes whatever baby slippers whatever yeah well is yeah and i'm straight onto the rods no messing about with the door or anything like that yeah i've done it numerous times in the past where literally i've been bunkered up and um yeah by the time you get unbunkered up and get out there it's it's come off basically now bear in mind this is a barbless place only yeah i hate barbless we all hate barbless but it is where it is isn't it you got to follow the rules to come and do rig checks and that so if you're caught with a uh, barb on or a micro then obviously you kicked off you paid all that money for jack but that is my view yeah now i have actually got basically from straight out so going over there so you can see hang on a minute 
Can you see the second bivvy? Yeah, just over there. There's a little red boy thing over there if I can zoom in. There you go. Oh, it was fingertip. Just over there near that bivvy. So that's a line what I've got. And I can fish from that bivvy over there all the way across over here. And it does literally go right around here. But because of all this grass and wheat, wheat reeds and all that lot, obviously, I can't really get around there. Unless I set a rod tip high, but it's a bit too windy for all that lot. So, yeah, there's the water, guys. So, good luck if you see one jump out. God, yeah. I'm not expecting a jump out, but I'm expecting to be down this end anyway, because the wind's coming this way. It's it's not cold, it's warming up. Yeah, it's, it's massively improved in temperature these last few days, and it's going to hold for a bit, so... Yeah, all going well there, yeah, come and have a little dabble. You might have just seen the cormorant jump out. So that thing keeps going all over the place. Seagull's right over there as well, so... Yeah, someone's probably spotting or something like that. So, or pick a throw a stick up, whatever. But I ain't put no freebies in yet. Yeah, I'm not doing anything yet. I'm just going to see how it plays. Uh, winter time I'd rather put less bait in than obviously put loads in and then have loads of freebies to go out I'd rather just literally keep it basically mouth size sort of things and then obviously see what happens yeah one bite at a time so there, there you go guys right I'm getting a nap right so I've been laid in bed most of it yeah try and nod off and try and catch a bit of sleep and stuff like that, listening out of the water and yeah, all the usual sort of stuff, yeah. Obviously, every time uh, those alarms just have a little beef and stuff like that, you must have a lot. But, making a brew, and uh, normally a place like this, I won't go putting bait in on the first night. Well, the moon is out at full swing, yeah. Absolute gorgeous watching the water. It's little things like this what you take for granted. Yeah, it seemed a little sparkle on the water from the reflection of the moon with the, the bit of wave coming towards you and stuff like that. It's like glitter. You don't take these little things for granted. Yeah, I've missed all this lot. So, what I'm thinking is just get some of the boilers and actually just, uh, just do a big scatter, yeah, do my roads. Because the rods have been weird, it's been right, left, uh, right, middle, left, and then left, middle, right, and then the uh, last one what went off was right again, so I was expecting the uh, middle one to go off and it didn't, and then the left one went off, so I'm obviously getting liners or something like maybe drifting over, I d there's no weed in here, so, well there is weed in here, but there's nothing enough to actually like make it drift, if you know what I'm saying. So I'm more saying it's liners and they're just literally coming in and out. Yeah, it could be pike. I don't know if there's any pike in it, to be fair. I really don't. So I know on the middle rod, yes, fair enough, I've got a tiny bit of reed hanging up. Yeah, Just on the middle rod, the left and the right rod is clear. So I was kind of expecting the middle rod to do a couple of them anyway, especially with a chop of the wind and stuff. But the wind is going to pick right up soon to uh, 40 odd mile an hour, 45, 46 I think it's going to be to. Uh, at the minute we're only about 14, yeah. so it's going to go right up there. But because that moon is shining from my left side right onto the water, oh my god, it's beautiful. So I'm going to grab this coffee, have a smoke. And then I think I'm just going to get a throw a stick because I have noticed a few seagulls on. And if I decide to do it tomorrow day, quite a bit of that bait's going to get nabbed by them. So if we do it now, they're not going to know. I can see what I'm doing because I can see all the water. Not with this light on, right? Obviously, I can't do it with light. But yeah, it's just nice. And uh, I thought I'd get it done before, obviously. The overcast comes back over again because it's going to rain from 12 o'clock all the way through until 6 in the morning. And because of that wind and the soft ground, 
it's actually lifting up pegs and as much as I hate doing it and I mean hate doing it I'm going to have to put the door down because this, this thing is just going to be like a parachute otherwise it's just going to keep lifting these pegs until it's going to be away with the wind so yeah I'm going to have to put the door down for that reason say so, hate that yeah but it is what it is I'd rather keep the baby down because the wind's going to go all the way around it then where at the minute it's coming through the door it's obviously trying to suck it upwards and we're not even at the worst of the wind yet oh because this ground soft I've pushed the pegs in numerous ways sideways pretty much straight down and I've got extra long pegs yeah I've got the um, top notch tackle pegs which are roughly about a foot long instead of just stand like six inch jobs so these are obviously double length and it's still lifting them yeah so very very soft ground where it is oh dear yeah ripped all the pegs out so quarter to five in the morning by the time I like semi sorted it out sort of thing obviously it happened a little bit before wind picked right off and we'll be up an hour uh, yeah I didn't think the pegs were going to hold funny enough and uh, they didn't did they well, it looks like I'm not the only one that's having issues. The, uh, the guys on the other end of the bank are walking up and down like crazy as well. Uh, not of their issues, obviously, yeah. I think it's just the wind box obviously eating them because it's uh, changed a little bit. It's more coming like a south wind and then um, it rained heavy. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, I'm glad I'm in here. It absolutely hammered it down. Yeah, it sounded more like hailstone. It's whacking me basically on the head. So, like, oh, this is quite therapeutic actually. Yeah. Like a little, uh, yeah, it's a bit like the missus stroking yeah, isn't it? <laughs> oh yeah, unfortunately the uh, the overskin has slid off. Yeah, I watched it going down. It's like, oh fuck. Hang on a minute. If that thing's not pegged down, the bivvy's not pegged down. So now it pulled obviously the bivvy pegged out as well. So literally the only thing what was holding the bed down, uh, the uh, bivvy down, was literally the ground sheet and also the uh, bed sat on top of it. That's what was holding it down. So I've had to obviously go out there and obviously put some more pegs back in again. Yeah, good job I, I don't do it with Timmy man, it'll just push them in like. And, but they're going all the way down anyway because the ground's just, I won't say mush, but yeah, just good like that. Yeah. Bit like a wet fart sort of thing yeah that's what the sound like so can't be out can it oh not on disney doing me heading already not even 24 hours in yet it's doing me heading <laughs> <laughs> no it's not this this place's fault yeah it's not it's not this yeah it's just obviously the weather in it can could have been done anywhere them trees behind me are, broke up like crazy, fell out of the roots and then uh, yeah, been falling down so I'll show you them tomorrow so well, I think some have been like it a while actually if it's not happened during the night I'm just trying to keep an eye on this bloody shelter tonight so at least the rain has died off a little bit but it's, it's still coming I tried putting the overskin back on but that wind <sighs> yeah, it just keeps sucking it back just clean out my hands alright so I'm going to get you out of the rain because otherwise the phone's going to be this way through and then uh, just keep an eye on all this lot because it's shaking over like shaking Stevens here. Yeah, all right, see you in a bit. Well, it's now two nights for no sleep. Mm. So, um, yeah, as I said earlier, the um, um, overskin got ripped off, yeah, winter skin, yeah, outer skin, whatever you want to call it. My right, hair's a right mess now. And, uh, yeah. I think it was about six sort of thing but well, the rest of it gave way didn't it so the baby went down as well ripped every tire stick up all at the same time luckily I caught it to save it going yeah it just went straight behind me basically I had to grab it hold it and um, yeah just collapse it down uh, I tried to sleep just getting underneath the bed really I've got a waterproof cover but it's one of these where you meant to put the storm poles in sort of thing the shrouds things and uh, that just kept blowing all over the place, ended up back down on my feet and all that lot because obviously my head was towards the wind. It was like, oh, sorry now, I'm having a right one, aren't I? Yeah. So, 
I tried getting my head down. I want up then. Yeah, I want up. I thought, what if it pisses it down again? Yeah, it had a chance of it. So it was saying no, it had a chance, and I thought skies look clear, but then I could see some on the horizon. It's like that's coming towards us. So it's like no. Nah. So it's all back up again, but in a different angle, and all going well. It's all right now, but the wind's meant to have calmed down, and it's starting to peak bloody back up again. Yeah, it was meant to go down to like 20 mile an hour, and it seems like it's bloody 40 again. Yeah, doesn't help with the ground being soft. Yeah, if the ground was nice and hard, then it won't be an issue. I've never had a drama with this. <coughs> well, the ground's soft, isn't it? So it's just ripping the pegs out. Can't do anything about it. It's like you need a bloody um, paracord rope and then literally just whack that straight over the top of it but I ain't got none with me so I can't do that either so all right so that's the update it's starting to get light lights on the horizon I can't see jack of the water now because the water's that side of me all I can see is that little tiny bit of a bay in front and then the rods yep so we'll see how today goes right I'm feeling a little bit less ranty yep so rant over right so what I've done there, I've just got the uh, marker rod out and that lot, and uh, yeah, just basically just having a better feel around. So instead of actually using the uh, normal rods and feeling it back that way, because they're not as stiff, so you can you, you can get a bearing of it, but you're not going to get the full on brunt iron like you are with braid and all. So I'm going back on the older lead on. God, we look a bit foggy on there. Yeah, so I've been whacking the old lead on. Why do I use white? Yeah, and the reason why is because you can tend to tell what colour the light bed is. So if you're pulling back, obviously, mud, silt, whatever, it's on there. So you can kind of see where it is. And uh, yeah, I've just got a couple of like, um, like stodgy brown, yeah, like just like clay. Well, not even clay, really. Clay is obviously different colours, isn't it? It's just like a I won't even say muddy brown, it's more like a sandy sort of colour, yeah. So that's where it is, and uh, yeah, I've got a nice gravel bar going parallel across from me. And uh, it's basically 12 wraps and 4 feet, right? That's where it is. Now why am I going 12 wraps and 4 feet? Because I set it up, and then that's, that's how it's exactly worked out. So with me um, spod rod, that's actually going out at uh, 11, yeah, 11 wraps, all right? So one wrap is obviously 12 feet. Now the water's 16 foot deep, so I know for well, when I start spodding, it's going to be landing exactly where my bait is, yeah? Because you've got to think, you got to, on your rods, when you with that clip, you got that pendulum effect, so as it's coming down, it's obviously coming back towards you. So that is the reason why I have set the um, spawn to land that little bit shorter. So that is going out to uh, basically 11 wraps. And then all I'm doing for the rods is adding an extra wrap on plus 4 feet. That equals 16 foot. That allows for the pendulum. Yeah, so that's obviously what's happening. Now the good thing is I can do that with all three rods because it is... I've, I've gone all the way across and it works out the same all the way around and it's really nice notchy as well Yeah, not weed. It's literally just grabbing the stones and you can feel it like popping in the stones That's what I like about them leads. Yeah, you get a be better feel on them oh, right. so, We have pre-made some mix. Yeah, did this last night before all the biddy and everything fell down right? and it's in there with all that lot I'm just gonna start you up a little bit more so we've got sweet corn in there boilers in there pellets in there hemp in there I'm also gonna put some more of this uh, mix oh yeah it smells nice but I want I wanted the um, juices from the sweet corn and also the hemp to actually really soak into all this mix yeah instead of the um, pellets actually floating to the top of the water because of the oil and stuff so I wanted it to really soak in turn it into like mush and then obviously it's going to sink like a brick but I'm going to get a nice spread between all three rods so I'm just going to do a road yeah so I'm not doing dinner plates because I don't believe in dinner plates 
and go stick with my road and do that. I did actually fire out some boilers out last night as well with a yoke thrower stick in the proximity, yeah, just a big scatter approach, yeah, so not exactly, but just to see if obviously anything will go. All the rods are going to be changing bait wise today, but in the meantime, I just want to get some of this mix out there, get them a little bit confident on it and stuff, and then I'm going to start to put the rods actually directly on top to the meter square or feet square, yeah. So that's how it's going. So remember what I've said, my spod rod is set up shorter than what the actual uh, rods are going. Now, it's all with the pendulum effect, yeah? So that spawn is it in the water, at the clip, it's sinking down. My rod's at the water, if I allow the pendulum effect, I'm gonna end up short. So I'm adding on the extra feet for the actual um, depth of the water for the pendulum, so it rocks back, and then I know I'm dead on the money. And all going well, I do start to see some fish. Yeah, because most people I've noticed that they, they match it up with the spod rod. Yeah, so whatever feet they're fishing, they fish it, but then they don't allow for this pendulum, so you're actually fishing short off your boat. Yeah, gotta think about these things. Yeah, forward thinking, forward thinking, forward planning. All going well works. Right then, so I basically put a bucket of bait out. Uh, I've, I tried the single approach, didn't I, yesterday, and yeah, not a lot of bait and all that sort of stuff, and um, yeah, so I've done a nice long line now of the uh, spod mix, and uh, I'm just literally about to uh, pull the rods in, and then uh, just get them set up, and then from that, being as I got no sleep last night or the night before, I'm going to probably get my head down for a bit, yeah, and then, uh, I mean, it's lovely today, the sun's out and everything, yeah, it's absolutely stunning today. Uh, yeah, the seagulls do like to uh, attack obviously the spawns and stuff like that, but the bits what I put in, I mean really to be fair, it's only the like floating bits of corn what they've been able to get, everything else has been sinking down, yeah, it's not pop up corn, it's obviously just every now and again some bits of it float, so that's obviously what they've been nabbing like, but I've got hemp in there, I've obviously got the, um, that um, bag mix in there, pellets in there, um, crushed boilers in there, um, condensed milk in there, um, cloudy mix in there, pretty much everything going really. Yeah. Uh, we'll see obviously what happens from that. It, end of day, it's worth a go in it. Yeah. So you've got to be in it to win it. And if you're not obviously trying these different things, then yeah, it's obviously not going to work, is it? So, or might, you might just get lucky. So I'm about to set these uh, rods up and then. Uh, probably do a rebate on all three rods as well PBA bags on there as well inject them with a the cloudy liquid as well and uh, yeah so much we head down so I don't think there's gonna be much filming today because I'm absolutely shattered yeah absolutely shattered well it's been a while since I've done any video and stuff like that uh, it's four o'clock basically now um, had my dinner, I think it was about 12, didn't do no filming before that, and uh, yeah, so the rods are still where they are, yeah, nothing's changed there, uh, the only thing what I have done, you know, just see if I can get more of a visual sort of thing of tonight, see if it is liners or what like, um, I've just got some of this bag mix, which is this like fine powder, also with uh, pellets mixed in there as well, and I've just got the Old Faithful, Vegetable oil, yeah, doesn't matter where it's from, that one's from Tesco, but it doesn't matter. And uh, yeah, instead of actually putting normal liquids in there, so like um, milk, um, cloudy mix, um, whatever, yeah, I thought I'd put that in and then actually I'll try and make it into the balls, and uh, the balls won't really hold in, it was just a bit too starchy, I just got it a bit too oily to be fair. Did a little tester in the side, just make sure it still sinks and all that like that, like that. Cause obviously the last thing you want to do is spawn it all out and it's all floated on the top. So yeah, it's all sank and everything, so it's all good. And uh, basically, I just look, I didn't do a lot of it to be fair. Probably about ten spawns and they're small spawns. I only use the small spawns now because they land in the water a bit quieter than obviously a big slapping one. Yeah. So put them out and uh, all that's uh, acting for with that oil. Obviously, if anything starts, yes, obviously it's going to be on the top now, right? 
but if anything does go mooching around in that, it's going to uh, bring the oil slick up. Yeah, that's what it's for. Yeah, give me a better indication. So, that's all what's happened. Yeah, other than that, there's been no liners or anything today. The uh, bobbins have tightened up a little bit, but that's obviously from all the wind and stuff. Um, obviously, the tow of the water. Um, but they're fine, they're not going nowhere, it's not moved the bags, it's just literally, because I was a bit slack on the lines, I set them, I had them tight, and then I slackened them off, and I'm obviously to just tighten itself back up, so probably a little bit of bow in the line, obviously with a chop of the water, but it has calmed down a lot, yeah, so it's nowhere near as windy, so all going well, I'll get a decent night's sleep tonight, the bivvy stays up, etc, etc, yeah, but I've had my head down in the day as well, just in case, yeah, so don't fancy going three days, three nights for no sleep. I'm still knackered now. So I might do a live feed later as well. So uh, yeah, uh, other than that, I'm going to get a slurp of this. I love this stuff, Tango Dark Fruit, or Dark Berry should I say. Absolute banging stuff this is, especially when you get a cold. I can't have. You see how tight it is in the compact, can't you? I've got a gun like that, I'll try and get in my mouth. Yeah. So uh, this one's nice and low down and stuff. Uh, it has it ups and it has its downs, yeah. Literally with the fucking wind. Right, so I thought I'd give you a bit of review over the uh, the um, spod rod. Yeah, it's not so much about the rod and reel. Uh, this is a um, I forgot where it is now. <laughs> I've had it that long. It's a Nash Toro where it's spod rod, yeah. And also uh, matched up with the Ultegra reel as well, spot reel. And um, I'm not kidding you. Yeah, this braid, the shot leader, has been on since the day I've had it, which is roughly about four years. So you can see the shot leader now. Look, yeah, it's just been getting shorter and shorter, obviously over time. Yeah, that's all it is. But it's it's still good for the cast. It's still got a couple of wraps around it anyway. But I'm going to need to replace that soon because as soon as I come bring it down so I'm not even got the spawn to the actual reel yet and obviously you can see my knot now the knot itself was just literally the uh, all bright knot yeah and the braid a lot of people obviously have issues don't they with the uh, braid regarding the uh, spots and that and then um, this is actually a uh, Daiwa uh, G braid and it's been on since the day I've had it yeah it's done marker work spot work it's literally had everything thrown at it. The only thing what I've had to do is obviously just cut bits of this off, you know, when you can't un obviously undo it. But I do like to tie the knots instead of actually going with the loop to loop things. Sometimes I struggle getting the bloody thing out, especially when my hands are cold. So I normally just cut it off and then obviously just tie it on, hence why it's getting shorter. But that is the um, Nash um, shot leader, that one. And uh, I've never had any uh, issue with that either. So, £35 shot leader. And uh, I believe it was 20 or 25 pound um, braid, yeah, spot braid. Never had a drama with it. Meets all the uh, ranges what I wanted to do. But like I say, I do actually go on the smalls or the mediums. I don't go on the larges, you yeah, know, because it makes too much noise. Yeah, yes, you're putting less bait in there. You, you are kind of making more noise, obviously, with obviously how many times it's hitting the water, but it's not hitting the water as hard. Yeah, so it's not a massive crack. Yeah, where obviously the big ones do. And um, yeah, there's my review. So rod, absolutely brilliant, just like the other rods. Yeah, so they're all matching. Uh, the only difference is they're um, three and a quarter test curve, and then uh, this one I believe is five. Yeah, I can't remember where it is now. It's covered in that much spot mix and everything. I can't even see where it is. Uh, da -da 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 -da. I think it's five pound. I can't remember. Yeah, uh, reels never ever come off. Yeah, Ultegra Spod XTD. The only thing I did do, I swapped the handle. Yeah, so uh, over Vanslow, uh, when I went fishing with him down Farlow's, um, he had the spod reel, uh, the slightly different version. He didn't like the handle, which was this one, and I prefer this handle because it matches in with the other ones. And I don't like the big chunky handle, you know, so I changed the handle for that reason. It just gives me a more unique feel with them, like, so it all feels the same, same, same type of cranking and all that. So, yeah. There's my review, absolutely spot on. You do pay obviously money for a decent kit like, but if it's gone last year and last year and last year and keep on going and going, then that's the main thing, isn't it?
Good morning. Didn't do any type of filming at all since that spod rod uh, from Real and Braden review. And then uh, last night looked absolutely bang on. Yeah, it's not quite a full moon because obviously the full moon passed actually on my birthday on 25th of January. But it was like a big moon. Yeah, it looked all round and all that lot, so it looked like a full moon. Yeah, and one one cloud in the sky. You can see all the stars. The water went really calm, the tiniest bit of a ripple on it, but that was it. And I thought, you know, tonight's a really, really good night for it. It was a bit warmer as well. And it's like, yeah. Anyway, I was on, on the phone to the missus, and then um, I got a bleep on the middle rod. It's like, ooh, 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 ooh. So, obviously, want to wind bite or anything like that because obviously they want any wind and then um, one of the other rods went I can't remember which one it were left or right so same again just a single blade so it's like they're there yeah they're there I've got quite a bit of bait in the swim now so obviously it's just moves around but bear in mind it's not just the carp what can pick up the bait what I put in anything can pick it up so what other species are in here roach bream whatever anything can pick it up yeah because it's all small particles yeah there is a few boilers in there but it's not a huge amount yeah and i thought you know it's gonna be a really good night for it i mean the night's still not over it's like really early morning the sun is literally just on the horizon just trying to poke up and it's i like to be up at this sort of time anyway so obviously i can get a gist because i tend to like obviously bosh out and stuff like that don't they obviously when it's just starting to get light or last thing at night like and um, yeah, it's just silent, really silent. It's, you think that there's no fish in here? Yeah. Well, they're there. I know they're there because obviously I keep getting the odd liner and that. But no, no runs or anything last night, otherwise you would have seen. Um, I had a little um, Raza coming in. Yeah, a little rat. I called him Raza. Yeah, I've had a um, a Robin as well. I've been calling him Dobbin because he keeps bobbing on my bloody uh, rods and. Yeah, but obviously he's not flying at night, so it's not him doing that at night. But yeah, a little Raza um, keeps coming in, and um, I don't bring him in. Yeah, I've lost it now because I threw it. But it's it's like a little tiny pine cone sort of thing. Yeah, and I swear down it's bringing it to me because I'm not picking them up or bringing them in. And yeah, I've just been, I just get it like in the, where my middle of my feet would be. It's like, no, I've not brought that in, and it's not wind because the wind's coming. The, from behind me anyway and yeah so uh, i reckon it's bringing me a little present try and give it some food or something i don't know i'm probably just hallucinating or something but i'm definitely finding these things yeah little tiny buds like that they're only tiny yeah and no it's not a little landmine from it it's literally the uh, some type of forage thing you know like a mini pine cone or something and i'm not all kidding off my boots there's none on the peg whatsoever oh uh, yeah i don't know so little Raza keeps bringing me things. I swear down it. Yeah. Either that or the Beecham's drugs are kicking in too much. Yeah, but I've run out of them now anyway. So yeah, nothing last night. I'm shocked at that actually. I've still got time for it. Like it's still going this bit of morning. Like, or even if they don't go, I am not changing anything today. Yeah, I am not putting any casts into that water whatsoever unless something else comes on the bank yeah i am not doing anything there is going to be no spawning no bait going in by throw a stick or anything like that i'm i don't i'm not even moving the rods the rods are staying as they are i know for well the fishing the presenter the ring clear spots so there's not really no point yeah now i'm going to also go with a washed out bait effect as well so obviously they've been in there I did a recast, I think it was about 12 o'clock yesterday, something like that. Obviously, it's over 12 hours from midnight. And then, obviously, yeah, I'm just going to leave them in until I'm basically going home now, which is tomorrow. More than likely, the hooks are going to be as rusty as bloody crazy, like. But I'm leaving them. But those hooks have uh, been on. Yeah, just last time I brought them in, I had a check on them. There was no wrong with them. Uh, I'm using the Ace Razor hooks. Um, I did have to crimp them down because it's barbless only and you are allowed to do that as long as you do the cloth test where you literally just hook it in your trousers or something like that as long as it don't catch then you're fine 
toe. That's obviously they've been crimped down on there perfectly fine for that. And they're still sharp. Yeah, there's, I couldn't see no rust on them or corrosion, so they're all good. But what rig I'm using, I'm actually using the uh, Ronnie Slip D. Yeah, and that's on the quarter boom again. Um, probably get away with like a braid I did think think about it last night it's like well shall I switch it over onto a braid because it's not tangling in the cast or anything like that because obviously I'm hooking it into the PVA bag so it's not tangling at all but I want to keep it down to a minimum yeah I don't want to do a single thing to that swim yeah it's just like if a fish takes it a fish takes it yeah so that's what I'm doing so I don't know how many hours those rods are going to be in the water it's going to work out about roughly 48 hours before they get pulled in there yeah that's a long time so i'm not one of these rod itchers if you know what i mean where it's like it's been in so long and i want to pull it out like 20 minutes or whatever yeah it's not gone blah 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 whatever no i'll leave it in if i know for well they're all spot on on that i will leave them in unless something's happened so yeah that is it so what filming i'm gonna do today uh I don't know because I haven't really got no content to be honest with you. I'm not used to it. Yeah, I'm out of practice. So I don't know what I'll film. Yeah, just fill you in on things really. That's all I've been doing up to now. Yeah, just fill you in on all little updates and what. Um, it's all fucking blankety blank like, isn't it? So, blankety blank checkbook and pen and all. Well, it's, it's the way it goes, isn't it? Uh, oh, um, the lake where I did want to fish, yeah, before I got here, before knowing that it's closed, like, one guy's had eight, <clears throat> he's had eight fish, just one guy on that one lake, and the lake is rammed, but it's booked out, yeah, it's all booked out on that lot, so, mm, mind you, it actually gets booked out from today, actually, so I could have fished that lake and then moved on to weird later on, like, but, I want hugging all this gear around and obviously, yeah, it's too much and that, like, going from barra to barra, and that, uh, but it's way it goes, isn't it, yeah, but I know the other lake is a good lake, it's it's always on social media, and, um, yeah, it's, it does well, um, but it is what it is, isn't it, I jumped into the gun, yeah, I could technically blame myself on that lot, but this is a bit more of a challenge, or should I say, a lot more of a challenge. You know, something happens, it's, it's special, isn't it? You know, instead of going on a water, what's classed as a rum's water? Yeah. Now, oh. right. I'll see what I can fill you in with later. Good morning. Right. Another night, nothing. Uh, final one now. So, final bit. Yeah. I've actually got up until half past twelve. That's when I bought the ticket. And, uh, nah, yeah, I just, I didn't do no filming yesterday because it was, it was film, was it? Yeah, I wasn't doing anything with the rods, so I didn't need to bring them in, so I didn't need to, like, rebate, re rig, all this sort of stuff, like. Um, guy, what was, um, basically behind me on, on the next pack is not behind me it's just why I've had to put the big of the uh, wind and stuff um he went so it came and did a night and then uh, he went and then uh, someone else has set up in there but no it's nothing it's dead yeah. I had a little go on my left hand rod last night I got in bed just nodded off and then did it did it I got up and I looked and it's like well basically throwing my wellies on just in case like and um, it's like nothing's even moving. It all stopped. I mean, it could have been a coot or anything, yeah. I don't know. It could have been anything. Coot, moraine, liner, could have been out. But the the other two guys are still down at the far end on this um, one. But there's no, there's still no fish come out of here. And um, those two, um, they must fish it regularly because they turn around and said that they don't even show. So, it's got, got me thinking a little bit, I'm probably overthinking, but I've only just got up to be fair, yeah, so, they don't show, uh, nothing's been caught for a year, yeah, it's, it's a bit hard isn't it, so it's like, 
Is there any fish left in this lake? <laughs> no way. Uh, we've not been otter because obviously got otter fences all around them now. But I'd emerge to the other and all the fish come out and obviously into another lake. I don't know. Uh, it's probably worth netting it to see what's actually in here. Well, saying that, the fish might just like to live on naturals instead as well. I don't think there is out in there, like, because it's, it's, it's pretty just uniform all over the place. So. Well, yeah, what I did yesterday, um, I put the rods in, obviously, the day before, with the bait round them and that lot. And I said to myself, I'm not moving them. I'm not moving them. Yeah, and I stuck to my guns, and I have not moved them. So, they're coming up 48 hours in the water. Yeah, not moved, untouched. Right. Now they're all on a great spot, yeah, they're all on a gorgeous gravel bar, yeah, one of the best gravel bars you can even imagine, they're on that. And, yeah, it's, it's odd, isn't it? No, well, saying that, it's winter time still, isn't it? Yeah. These last few days, they've not exactly been cold, cold, yeah. I'm only wrapped up because I'm not used to it anymore, because I've basically been stuck in the house pretty much. Well, apart from work, I've been stuck in the house all year, isn't it? I've not been on the bank, so my climate control in my body and that lot is all fucked at the minute. I don't know what I'm watching in the new Oh, I'm, I'm going to be packing up early and I'm going to be going anyway. Yeah. Um, if anything does happen, I'll show you. But I doubt it, guys. Yeah, I really do doubt it. So I need to leave the bed down for a little bit. And that's basically what's helping hold the bivy down because the pegs all fuck God, yeah, it's a bit baggy. It is at about five in the morning, by the way. So uh, yeah, so I'm gonna get off and that lot. So I couldn't get onto the two lakes what I wanted, which was Turners or um, Hoggets. Yeah, for swim, well, not swim booking, but lake bookings. But I'd recommend to dodge Holdens. Unless you just want a peaceful night's sleep away from the missus or something like that. Yeah, if you need that. Yeah, if that's what you're gonna get. Yeah, I love my missus a bit, and so I can't wait to get back to see her. But yeah, that's, that's, I'd say that's what this lake is good for a good night's fucking kip, plenty of rest. She's not doing out else, <laughs> and it's not just me, everyone, yeah, they've all been the same, yeah. And uh, there's quite a few on it now. Um, there's one in the corner, I don't know if that one's fishing or not because that it looks like it, if it's just been up for years, yeah. So I don't know if there is actually anyone in there fishing or not. Two straight across from me, another one in the corner, there's one outside of me now. And then there's two more down on the other end. So I believe all the pegs are booked on this uh, lake. And uh, no, nothing's happening. Yeah, it's just dead. So they could be shoaled up somewhere. But surely between all these pegs, someone's going to find them and get them moving. Well, no, it's not. So if I don't do any more filming, Obviously, it means that I've buggered off. Yeah, so I'll just say now, cheerio. Thanks for watching. It's been a bit of a poor one, hasn't it? Yeah. But thanks for watching, and see you on the next one.